So if you're still on the screen where it's saying, take the tour, for the moment, skip it, because I'm going to give you a different tour. If you went through the tour yourself, that's fine. What I'm going to show you here is this, um, we're going to get acclimated with the different Google Plus screens, the big important ones. Uh, then we'll talk about using Google Plus effectively. So first, just to get acclimated, again, the menu, the Google Plus menu, if you hover over, currently mine says My Business. If you hover over, I've got Google Plus page and stream and photos and such. Okay, that's one thing. And then also on the top right, now notice on my particular case, it doesn't have my picture anymore. It has this little, I see it as a little gift, like a gift wrapped package. If you click on that, that should then show you that you're currently using whatever the name of, that you named page. So our terminology is we've got business pages and we've got a personal profile. So let's try to keep that straight. Sometimes these terms that they use uh, are a little too generic unfortunately because you often have the tendency to call it a page. Everything's a page. But on these social networks we see that also in Facebook. We have a business page and we have a personal profile. So I'm not going to say let's go to our personal page. I'm going to say let's go to our personal profile or I'll say let's go over to our business page, not our business profile, business page. So here up on the top right menu it shows I'm on my business page. It says right there, this is a Google Plus page. And there's my personal profile right there. So I can easily switch between clicking my personal profile. So now there's the personal, it's got all my stuff, uh, people tweeting, uh, posting about that there's only 134 days until Star Wars. And then uh, I can click on the icon at the top right there again and switch back to the, I can switch back then to the Victor's Bakery page. I can switch back to the personal, I can go to the business, I can go back and forth. It's very easy. So get used to clicking on that to switch back and forth between the two, the profile and the page. Another way to do it is by hovering over the menu and going over to the menu item of pages, all pages. Same sort of concept where it says manage, page, manage this page to go back and forth and such. So as I work with a variety of clients, I have to make sure I'm always using the right account. It's very easy to accidentally be editing the wrong account, the wrong profile, or the wrong page. And even me that I've had lots of experience, it has happened to me before that I think I'm working on the client's business page and I actually posted something to my personal profile, or even worse, vice versa. I think I'm on my personal profile and I accidentally post something to the business page. So you have to make sure you're on the right account. A quick way to tell that is, as soon as you're able to, as I'll show you in a moment, as soon as you're able to add the logo of your business and your own personal photo, then you can quickly, easily tell which account you're in, which are you in a profile or are you on a page. And also it should be obvious by the name up here. I'm using Victor's Bakery. When I'm on my personal, it's going to say just my name. And there's my photo. So I don't ever get the page with the photo. Is that because mm -hmm. I don't have a Google Plus account? It looks, you have a Google Plus account, but you don't have a Google Plus personal profile, perhaps. And that might be OK. If it did let you create the business page and you're using the business page, then I think we'll be OK. During lab time and such, we can confirm. But at least if you've got the personal, I mean the business page, you'll be good. So wherever you're at, make sure that you're on the business page. Switch back to the business page. And now if you hover over the menu, there's My Business, Google Plus Page, etc. Let's go to Stream. Hover over the menu and select Stream. And in my case, and probably with everyone, it's empty. It's a ghost town. There's no connections. You have no followers. You are not following anyone, so there's nothing here. When you log into your Facebook or your Twitter or other networks, you see stuff. 
because you have connections of friends on Facebook or followers and such on the other networks. But here this is a brand new business page, there's no connections, so you see nothing. I'll talk about, of course, how to get followers, how to, how to build an, an audience and all of that. We'll get to that soon. We're still sort of getting acclimated with the menus here. This is the stream. If you hover over the menu and go to Google Plus page, the page will show you this is what it looks like uh, for people that visit your profile. Um, my company's profile is google.com slash plus PMD Interactive. At the moment, yours is that huge address at the top, plus.google.com slash gibberish. That's what yours currently is. You probably at some point want this nice memorable name. You cannot claim that memorable easy to use name just yet because you have a brand new account. Again, this is Google trying to prevent spammers and scammers from stealing these names and holding them, you know, kind of ransom. So you cannot claim your name like short name like this right away. You have to fully set up your profile as I'll show you how in a moment. So you have to set up your profile, you have to use it, I think for two weeks, and then when you log in on the, on the second week, it'll pop up at the top, claim your custom URL. Right now we can't, it's brand new, or if you've never used it, you can't, they, they don't trust you yet. And yes, that is maybe a little overbearing, but I think it's good. That way someone, some other spammer doesn't take the name that you want. Some other scammer doesn't create another account. So we can't quite claim your name just yet. Yes? Yes. You see at the very top uh, here of Google, we've got, a, we've got a little search box. So within Google Plus, we have a way to search for people, pages, posts, everything. So that's how you can search if that's where you take. So this is what mine currently looks like. And when I go into more detail in the social media class, that the, the purpose of that class is to set up the profile and to get followers, to get views and such. The purpose of getting more followers and views and all of that on our social networks is that then we have a captive audience. If you go to your mailbox and you open it up and you, and you take out the mail, some of it is going to be junk mail and some of it is going to be useful mail, right? So that junk mail well, that mail that I just call junk mail is not junk mail to my mom. We both get that Bed Bath & Beyond coupon, but I put it in the recycle, where my mom takes it and then po possibly uses it one day. So that company, Bed Bath & Beyond, paid money for someone to think of that ad, to design that ad, to print that ad, to ship it, to then deliver it to my doorstep, which then I looked at it and put it in the recycle, whereas my mom used it. And there's many that will do what I did, and there's many that will do what my mom did. That's what Beth and Bed Bath and Beyond has to justify to their um, financial department and their investors and all of that. What's our return on investment of spending a million dollars to get all of these ads out to all of San Diego? 25% will use that ad, and 75% will not. Is that a justifiable return on investment? So we can accomplish similar things with social media. If I have a hundred followers and I tweet something on Twitter, I potentially have a hundred people that looked at it. Some of those will not care and some of them will. So let's say out of a hundred followers, two care and they actually buy something. Well, 98 didn't. That's a big discrepancy. These numbers are gonna vary, of course. But let's say I've got a thousand followers on Twitter. And let's say that we saw that only 1% of people will care. Well, out of 100 people, how much is 1%? One person. If you've got 1,000 people, how much is 1%? My math is always bad. 100 or 10 or whatever it is. So some amount is going to care. If you've got 5,000, more will care. 10,000, more will care. Even if it's always 1%. So the point of getting followers on a social network is not to boost our ego. It is to build an audience, a captive audience that cares about what you're about on social media. 
So right now on our pages we have no followers. We want to get followers. I'll talk about that in a short moment. But even though we say it, and it's usually true, sometimes it's not, which is you can't judge a book by its cover. I'm going to say you can judge a book by its cover when it comes to social media. Why would someone follow my account? If I'm trying to get followers, if I'm interacting with people, if I'm, if I'm just trying to get attention and get followers, why would they follow me if they don't know anything about my story, anything about my company, my connections, if I don't have any photos, if I don't have anything, if I don't even have my logo? Someone is just going to say, this is a spam account, move on. They will not follow. So it doesn't make much sense to try to get followers as soon as we set up our account, because our account is barren. No one is going to want to follow our account if it's so empty like this. So I'll mention then here that we're going to edit a few of these items as best as we can, and I'll give advice. But wherever you're at, you want to make sure you've, you're on, our, on the Google Plus page screen. If you're elsewhere, make sure you're over on the Google Plus page screen like this. Notice if you hover over your logo, you can change it. I don't have my company logo. I can't change it here. I want to do it when I get home. I want to do that as soon as possible. You don't build much trust when you're to the to the people using Google Plus now. You don't build enough. You don't build build any trust if your account uh, icon here still looks like the generic account icon. You also want to change this cover photo. There's a few that are built in that look nice, but again, it would look nicer if this is a photo of the restaurant, if this is a photo of one of our cupcakes, if this is a photo of the smiling employees of my company. So those are two basic things to start to, to set up to entice people to follow you. I can't do it now, but when you get home you should. These are the things we can probably edit pretty well right now. For example, there's a section called People. Don't worry about that just yet. We don't have any connections. Don't worry about people yet. We have Story, Tagline, and Introduction. Click Edit, where it says Story, so we can edit our story. Tagline, the 10 words that describe your page best. Now, unfortunately, it's, I don't, it's not literally 10 words. It's a sentence. Don't just put in there keywords about what your site is. Put in a sentence. Like, let's say, my company, Victor's Bakery. I'm going to think of one sentence, such as, East Lake Bake... Uh, if I'm going to do family-owned East Lake Bakery, specializing in gluten-free... gluten-free fair. That's a very dense sentence there in that I'm explaining as much as I can about my business. If you take the SEO class, we talk about developing our keywords. What defines our website, our online presence? So in short, I'm trying to write a sentence that if someone is searching on Google, I could appear. Because here I'm using the keywords bakery, of course. I'm using East Lake, which is the location where I'm at. So if someone is also in East Lake and looking for an East Lake bakery, they could find me. If they're looking for gluten-free baked goods, I've got that keyword. And then perhaps the people that you know don't want a, an, yet another big uh, corporation to, to shop at or whatever, I've written family-owned. Now, I'm not going to just make up these keywords and stick them there arbitrarily. I do have to develop my keyword strategy. That's what my SEO class is about. This can, of course, be edited whenever you want. But if you think about it in how I've written it, do you have a location? Make sure you add it. What's your specialty, or why are you important, or why are you different from the rest? The other graphic visa designers, the other web designers, the other realtors, the other dog walkers, the other bakers. What are you different? How are you different? In one sentence, explain that. It might be a tall order, so that's why you want to start thinking about this. 
in the introduction, this is another place where you can write a couple of sentences, one paragraph, that explains yourself, that puts those keywords and concepts so that when someone searches, they could find you. And you could write as much as you want here, technically. I don't think there's a limit, but I wouldn't write 200 words here. I would also kind of keep it short like a tweet, 140 characters, 150 characters, a, a paragraph. Even though I can write a lot, I wouldn't. Because it's still going to come down to the other content that you add to Google+. This is one of the things. But what about the pictures you're posting? What about the ads that you're posting? What about the polls and the other fun stuff? This is part of building your brand, but the actual content that I'll talk about how to produce, that's a little more important. So think of one short paragraph that you could add there. Uh, if you don't have an idea right now, that's fine. You can add it later, but I'll just say uh, founded in 1989. We are a family-owned bakery that uses classic old world recipes with a new twist, etc., etc., etc. Obviously, I've got experience in this, so maybe I can think of something. If you don't know exactly what to write, you don't have to write now. You just have to do it at some point to really have a fully set up profile. Yes? You might have set up your yours uh, previously, so it may not have it, and that's okay if it doesn't, or it may be in another screen. So a little bit later during the break, we can look around and see if it's on a different spot. Yes. The network is in this room. Uh, the network is NCC Wireless, not not that other one. So the network is NCC Wireless. And the password is CE Spring 2015. Uh, CE, yeah, CE Spring 2015. So if anyone wants to use their tablet or mobile device or whatever, this is what our network is. Maybe I shouldn't be putting it on our video, but that's okay. So. Um, oftentimes in Google Plus, you will be seeing the concept of is this going to be public? Is it going to be for only you or other options? I'll talk about those options when they make a little more sense a little later. But this is the ability for you to share your content to the right people. Later on, I'll talk about a very powerful concept that Google Plus has in that, um, let's say I have a, a, a pet food, a pet shop, and I have customers that are dog people, customers that are cat people, customers that are bird people. I can put out a post on Google Plus and target it only to the cat people because the dog people might not be interested in that. So I can organize people into what they call circles or groups. Circles. So this will make more sense a little later, but who would you like to see your content? We're going to leave this public most likely. You want anyone to be able to see this. Whatever you've written for the moment is okay. Go ahead and save. You can always edit it later. Scroll down. We'll talk about what communities are very, a little later. Very important. Contact information, also important. Click on Edit Contact Information. Again, would you like this to be public or private or extended? I'll explain those a little bit later. Most likely you want this to be public. You want any potential customer to see this <coughs> contact info. And you have the option to put in a phone number, cell phone, email, fax, pager, chat, or address. So whatever makes sense for you, you want to add that. Because again, this is what would show up when someone searches. If they're looking for your store hours, um, are you open? What's your contact information? We can add that uh, depending on the account. Let's get 
uh, let me see here. You should be able to put in one of each. So as soon as you add a, a one, it'll give you the next one. So technically, you can have five phone numbers. So whatever way you want to get contacted, you should add that in. Save that. And we've got links. So if you edit links, it already has my website there. If you didn't add it previously, you can add it there. And then you've got custom links. So if I add a custom link, I can say, okay, here's also my Facebook. HTTP Facebook.com slash Victor's Bakery. And I've also got maybe a Twitter and a YouTube, and I've got this and that, so I can add plenty of other links. Uh, I could also, I don't have to point it to another social network. I could do something like this, the shop, and then put in a link over to my, um, to my website directly at the shop. So if I have the address of a particular screen of my website, I can then make a link that says the shop. And then there's a link directly for people to go shop on my website. So once I build those 10 or 12 or 100 or 1,000 followers on any social network, Google Plus in this case, I want to direct them. The goal of all of that is this is advertising in a sense. This is marketing. That coupon that I threw away is going to work on a bunch of other people. So the more people I get in, in, in circles on Google+, the more there's a possibility that some of those will accomplish the goal I want them to, which is to buy a cupcake, sign up for my newsletter, donate to my nonprofit, etc. So we can come back and edit any of these whenever we want back on the Google Plus page screen. This is one of the things we want to do before we start to try to get followers. This is to give ourselves some legitimacy. We're not just another uh, fly-by-night organization that has just popped up on Google+. We have a fully set up profile and another trick that I'll show in a moment. But once we've set this up and used Google+, Plus for a little while, I believe it's two weeks, when you come back to this screen at a certain point, there will be a brand new item under links that will say claim your custom URL. Or oftentimes as soon as you log in you'll get a black bar at the top that also says claim your custom URL. I don't have it yet, I'm, I'm too new. Because I, I want to do that as soon as I can so I can have a nice concise address. That's currently my Google Plus address. So any questions on this screen? Okay, so one of the things we want to do on our Google Plus is set up the profile like this. The other thing is I want to add a few posts to my profile. Even though I don't have any followers and no one's going to see it right now, I want to add some posts because when I'm trying to entice followers and they check out my profile, they're going to see oh, this profile has content. It's not just a spam site. This profile, sorry, this page has content that I would care about to follow. So if I just right now try to get followers, there's nothing to still to prove to them to follow me. So hover over your menu and go to stream. The stream is where we would see all the posts that you publish and also the posts and the content that you that your connections have published. Because social media, in my opinion, and in many others' opinion, should be a dialogue rather than a monologue. Can someone tell me, what's a monologue? One person, one person talking. Mono for one. Monologue. Mono talk. One person talking. So sometimes people run their social media as a monologue. That I've got an account, I'm going to publish stuff, I'm going to put a cool picture, I'm going to put text, a video, on and on. But I never reply to people. I never follow up on a post. I never follow others and engage with them. That's the dialogue. Obviously it takes more effort, but it pays off. 
if you look at McDonald's, if you look at T-Mobile, if you look at Chipotle, I just saw YouTube Today, they actually engage with their, with their connections. Maybe a, a, just a quick thumbs up or a smile or a reply or, or a link or something meaningful. Then those people say, oh, YouTube cares about me. Let me continue to you know, use YouTube. McDonald's retweeted me great. Let me continue to go to McDonald's. So if you have a dialogue, your followers will be more apt to care about your company more. If you're just a monologue, you just put stuff out there to the world and never reply, you'll have followers, sure, but not as engaged followers. So what I'm trying to get at is we don't have any content yet. We haven't started the dialogue yet. It's empty. Google Plus gives us the ability to make these kinds of posts. We can do a plain old text post, a photo post, add a link, video, an event, or a poll. And I would say, in the beginning, just to set up, to add content to entice followers, my goal would be to add three to five posts. I don't have any followers, so I'm going to talk to no one, basically. But I want to add three to five posts before I try to get followers. So I could put in one text post and two photos. That's enough. I could put in three photos, one text, and one video. That's good. Three to five. You don't want to do a lot because then no one's paying attention. But you don't want to do one because then people will say this account is a spam account. Three to five posts. What exactly to write about? We'll, we'll get to that. But think about, like right now, we're going to write a text post together, if you'd like. Um, and I'll give you some tips on that. So click text, or just click on the box there, click text. And then it shows when you've got your logo, you'll see your logo. And it says share what's new. And notice you can still attach a photo or a link, so it's not that you're limited to only text or only a photo. You can add, you can mix and match. And so I'll explain what two means in a moment, but let's say this is our very first post. You're going to write something here, and you might have a notion of what social media is. That's the place where people share funny cat pictures and all of that. Yes, but it's also the place where businesses connect with customers, existing or potential. So you want to think of using social media in terms of what's in it for your followers. Why would your followers care? For your personal account, great. Write about what you had for lunch and that you went to the store and that sort of thing. Great. Your followers might care. But for a business, what's in it for existing or potential followers, aka customers? So I'm going to say here, we're excited to finally be on Google+. Plus. circle us, but the terminology is circle, it's synonymous with follow, circle us, follow us, circle us to get exclusive coupons. So what's in it for the followers? What's in it for the people? Um, as I mentioned earlier, you can post the same thing to all the networks. But a better tactic is to put exclusive content on each network to entice people to follow you on the other networks. So if you're trying to build a Google Plus audience from Facebook, you can post, hey everyone, follow us on Google Plus. We've got exclusive coupons there. You don't have those coupons on Facebook. You've only got them on Google Plus. You could then get followers on Google Plus. So here I'm saying on Google Plus, we're going to do exclusive coupons. I'm going to say follow us to get exclusive coupons and see amazing photos of goodies. Again, this is my Victor's Bakery. This might not really apply to you, but think about what would you say to entice someone, to convince someone to follow you on Google Plus. Maybe you don't quite have an idea. That's okay. Uh, you want to start thinking about this stuff. How to use a social network uh, to build an audience, to keep an audience, to grow an audience.
one of the things that I like about Google Plus that the other networks don't have is the ability to do a little bit of text formatting. We can add a little bit of bold to our text or italics. You can't do that on the other networks. So this is a big secret here. I want to bold stuff or italicize. You've also got the ability to do strike through, which is not that useful, but you could. So let's say we want to bold the word coupons. So to add bolding, we would we would add the asterisk around what you're trying to bold. So the asterisk is shift eight. So shift eight right here, and then coupon shift eight. Between this asterisk and that asterisk will be bold when we when we share it. It doesn't show up now when we share it. So just to show you here, this will be bold. Bold. Asterisks. Asterisks. This. I'm about to name them. This will be italics underscores. So if you put underscores, it doesn't have to be on a word, it can be a whole sentence. This will be italics. <coughs> and then lastly, if you do dashes, this will be strike through. Dashes. Those are the three. Um, Bold, under, uh, bold italic, strike through. This would make a little line through it. Yeah, it's not that useful. Um, but those are the three things. You, don't, you can't change the color of your text. You can't change the font of your text. But here, you can do bold, italics, and strike through. And the point of that is you can jazz up your text posts a little bit. It doesn't have to be plain old text. They can have a little bold and italics to catch attention. So if you think about where can I add bold, where can I add italics, you just use that technique. Again, you don't see it until you share it. But those are the three options. We'll see in a moment. Now, as I said earlier, we can share our content to whomever we want. Uh, Google Plus came out after Facebook and Twitter and they saw what those two networks had done and, and thought, well, we can do perhaps something better. And one of the things that they're big on is sharing content to the right audience. So let's say you're connected to 100 people. You can organize them into circles. Um, so we'll see how to do that. But um, let's say I've got 100 people and some of them are cat people, some of them are tech people, some of them are, um, you know, annoying people. I can put them all in different circles. They won't know what circle they're in. They will just know that you've made a connection. So you could put those annoying people in the annoying circle and they won't know they're annoying. They'll just know that you're connected. And that comes up right here. Who are we sharing this to? The default is public. If you hover over that it tells you a little bit more. This may be visible to anyone anywhere. So people searching in Google Plus or a regular Google search, they may find this. This photo, this text, this poll, whatever. It's public. You can turn that off and then you can then select, well, we've got your circles. Your circles is everyone in your circles except the ones you're just following. As I said, I can put, I can create circles and put my hundred people into the appropriate circle. And I'm going to say, this is only for my followers, my circles. It's not for the public. So again, exclusive content only for my circles. Question? That's an interesting Yeah, only for the people that have uh, actually followed you. Um, you can, um, in a sense, you can mix and match this as well. You can select both. It will be public and also for the circles. I'll explain why you might want to do that in a moment. But uh, let's say I, I only put your circles, so just my followers. Um, so would you put them in the circle that are no longer public? Exactly. If you put this post into a circle, it's not public, unless you specifically say public. Uh, it does mention the special circle called following. You can put people into the cat circle, into the bird circle, into the following circle, and that's a special circle. 
which notice it says here, it shares with everyone except those you're just following. Because you might be following accounts like Mashable or Apple or Microsoft or this campus. You're following them, but you're not really going to share anything to them because they're not your customers. They're not really anyone that's going to answer back. So if you put anyone into the following circle, they will not be shared to when you select your circles. You've got a very useful one here, extended circles. Everyone in your circles plus all the people in their circles, friends of friends. So if I've only got 10 connections, but those 10 have 10 connections, potentially you could actually reach 100 connections, not just the 10 you have right connected with you. So what I would recommend, what I'd often do for companies, is to select extended circles and public. Anyone that comes across this content will see it, Anyone that searches for this content will see it, and I will be pushing it out to my followers. They could uh, most likely see it, and then their followers, their connections, friends of friends. Now, people can turn that option off. I don't want to see friends of friends content. People can turn that off, but at the moment it's on by default, and people don't know perhaps where to turn it off. So you will be reaching some amount of more people than just the 10 you've got connected. Yes? question after you post so like for example tonight we're just setting this up and we're experimenting we're trying stuff out so I might not want to push this out to everybody mm -hmm. but then as the week goes on and I make my page all pretty and mm -hmm. I've got everything worded the way I want it and everything and then I do want to make it real public can I go back to this particular post and add public unfortunately we can come back to edit the post content itself but not who we shared it to so perhaps they'll fix that in the future but at the moment we can only go back and edit the content of the post, not who it was shared to. So that's something to keep in mind. Okay, yes. so say you, um, you share something with some circles, and then, not, and, then, and then you go back and you change it with their circles, within their thing, does it change what they're, what they see? Or they're already yes, it would change. The content itself would change. So whoever it was shared to, it would change to the latest version. They wouldn't keep the old version. So we've got that, we've got, we can do those circles, and then notice if you scroll down a little bit, well, it, right now we've got some basic circles created following customers, VIPs, and team members, and there's no one in those circles, those say zero. But as we make connections and we organize them into circles, those fill in. So I could say, maybe this is something only for the VIPs. I've put 20 people in there, so only those 20 people would see this post. And I can, of course, add VIPs and team members so that the team members know about this special deal and they're not confused when someone asks for that discount. So we can mix and match. Yes? So the way I would treat that is like I ask all these people, join my Google Plus page, and then like my employees or specialty customers or just the general public, I put them in these circles. Mm -hmm. And then if I say, oh, I have this t-shirt sale, I only want it to go to the female. Mm -hmm. um, circle that I want. I can make up these circles? Yes, oh, we'll see about making the circles, but but definitely. These are the built-in ones, but that's that's the cool thing that I like about Google+. Plus. You can organize people into these segments. Can you be in different circles? Yes, oh. you can put the cat people, uh, one person in the cat circle and in the dog circle, just fine. You can put one person in more than one circle. Um, later on we'll talk about communities. We can also share to communities, which is very cool, but we'll get to that. And then notice also here, if I don't select anything, it suggests add names, circles, or email addresses. So if I know someone already on Google+, and I start typing their name, it might pop up. They might pop up there. Now there's more than one Victor Campos, so you might not find mine. But um, then here, for example, I could be sharing it to that Victor Campos. Only that one person on Google Plus will see this. That's sort of like a private message. I can add more than one person, of course. And I can add an email address. So let's say uh, victor at victor.com. If they are on Google Plus, they will, they will get this email. If they're not on Google+, they'll still get the email, but they'll get an email in their inbox that says, Victor shared, Victor's Bakery shared something with you on Google+. Click here. It'll bring them back to Google+, and they can see it on Google+. 
but if they want to comment on it, reply to it, whatever, they have to have a Google Plus account. So this also is not set up for an email distribution list. You're not going to send an email blast here. I'm going to use that other software for that because you cannot load in a list of a thousand emails here. You have to do it one by one, so it's not set up for that. And honestly, I don't see this very useful. To entice people to join you on Google+, Plus when they're perfectly fine on Twitter, on Pinterest, on Facebook, is not going to happen. You're not going to convince your family to come over Google+. Plus. You may love it after today, but you're not going to convince your family. And your family is not going to be the target audience, most likely, of this. You're going to get new followers, you're going to get new customers, you're not going to share that ad again and again and again to your seven family members. You're going to get a 70 new followers. So to me, this is not that useful to send an email through here. You could, it's not that useful. You're really, in my opinion, going to be using extended circles and public. And then of course, particular circles as you set them up. If it's if it's also tagged as public, then it would show up on your page. If it's not public, then, if it's not public, then the regular person would not see it. Yeah. So this will show up. Right now our page is empty right here, as we saw. And since I put this public, if you found my page, you would see this. But if I had only set it to extended circles, you wouldn't see it. So finally, let's click Share. It gets published, and then now we have the formatting. There's the bold. This will be bold, asterisk. This will be italics, underscore. And there's the strike through. So you might be able to find one or two reasons why to use strike through, but it's not that common. I posted this, Victor's Bakery, shared publicly, at what time, and then it tells me here, uh, quick tips, everything that we post will have a little dog ear right there, which will allow us to do some things, which I'll explain in a moment. Question? Uh, I think it, you already answered it. If you were to type in a web address in there, post. Uh, yeah. Exactly. If you if you didn't select link here and just text, and you do add an address, it will still format it as an address, and it will make it an active link like that. So that's clickable. Now the uh, that little dog ear in the corner. If you hover over, if you hover over any post that you make, and also other people's posts, if you hover over a post get a little dog ear in the corner, click on that, you've got some things. Oops, I made a mistake. I want to go fix the spelling. You can edit the post. It doesn't let you edit who you shared it to, however, unfortunately. It's just the content. <coughs> and that's amazing when the person that you shared it to, it changes mm -hmm. right over there. Yep, it just, those changes trickle down to everyone that it got shared it to. You can completely delete a post. The thing, of course, is you cannot undelete it. If there's no recycle bin or trash can here, it's deleted, it's deleted. Mm -hmm. So there's delete. You can get a link to the post. So if you click that, it gives you the direct address to that one post in all of Google+. The point of that is you can send out an email blast. Save that and then delete it when you get back and change your mind, right? Nope. When you, say, when you say save it, what do you mean save it? Uh, control C. Okay, that will work. Yeah, if you control C, if you copy it, that'll work. But um, normally, if you don't do that, then it's gone. If you select link and you copy this link, you could send out your monthly email to your newsletter and have a link back to Google Plus to that post because we can create polls here. Let's say we've got a business and we're asking what sort of uh, new cookie should we sell next month. I can create a poll and add photos and options and so forth. It's a basic, you know, multiple choice thing. And then once I publish that, I get the link to it. I send it out through email and say, hey, everyone vote on our poll. And they'll be able to follow the link and click to, to vote. They do need a Google Plus account, so there's that positive and negative. But that's the point of getting this link to this post. Uh, 
Yes. Okay, so they, they'll see the post, they just can't. Exactly. Without they'll be able to see it, and hopefully they'll be enticed enough to register and follow you and then vote. Mm. But uh, some, may <laughs> see, some may not. But they will at least be able to see it. Yes. For most of these things, they need a Google Plus account, and often it comes from a Gmail account. You don't. You don't. Technically, you don't need a Gmail account sometimes to create a Google Plus, but the easiest is just to have a Gmail account. So if they've already got Gmail, it'll just probably tell them, "Hey, upgrade to Google Plus," which is much faster than creating the whole account from scratch. Embed post is related to that in that we can copy the code of this item into our website. It's a little advanced than none of than most of us need, but if you want to copy that poll into my website. I could take the code. I believe they still need to be registered with Google Plus to vote, but they would be able to see it. So this is a quick way to add some polls to your website. So um, can, I repeat, can I clarify something? With these polls, say you're sending out to people that do not have Google Plus. Mm -hmm. You send them this link. Would this be a good way for them to sign up Google Plus if they really want to do the poll. And also, it would be following you in Google Plus, so maybe that's more future interaction. At the very least, you might entice them to join Google Plus to answer the poll. Mm -hmm. And even better, then, as they see that poll and your other content, they might say, well, this is a good account to follow. Mm -hmm. So in theory, you could get votes on that and follows. Thank you. Mute posts will make a little more sense later um, because right now I've posted this and therefore all therefore it's public and it went to my extended circles and in my case no one saw it because I have no connections. But let's assume I've got a hundred connections. And then a few people added a comment. There's the ability for people to comment. Well, I'm going to get an alert every time someone comments or interacts with my site, with my profile that is. Uh, my my page, and so if I don't want those inter if I don't want those notifications anymore, I can mute the post. Usually you 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 usually don't do this. You want to know someone replied, someone voted. I want to know that, but you can turn that mute on <coughs> if there's too much activity, and that's kind of a problem we want to have too much activity. Disable comments is related to that. Maybe you've got a post. And for whatever reason, it's bringing out all the crazies and they're, and they're posting crazy things. So you can turn off disable comments or turn on it so that they can't comment on that. Google Plus and Facebook are great for controlling your message, your brand. Twitter is not so good. On Twitter, you can post whatever you want and so can anyone else. And you can use hashtags and all of that, but someone might hijack your hashtag or your message and then your message gets away from you. It happens all the time. It happens, for example, maybe a year ago or so, the, uh, the NYPD I was on Twitter and they wanted to build community uh, awareness and such, and they had uh, the hashtag, uh, MyNYPD, and they tweeted, hey everyone, post a photo of you and your local police officers and hashtag it MyNYPD. So their idea was to get people, you know, holding hands with the police and fun stuff and all of that. The message got away from them and then people started to post police brutality, police success, and all of that. And so their message got away from them on Twitter. You can't control your message as effectively. On Google Plus and on Facebook, you can. People, you can, you can do that same sort of my NYPD thing. But then if it's starting to get corrupted and, and, and people are starting to post weird things, you can always turn off your comments. And you can also go in and, and delete people's comments. You can't do that on Twitter. And that's perfectly fine that you control your message like that, that you moderate your replies and such. It's your company, it's your page, it's your content. You can do that. You're not infringing on people's um, free speech because it, it's yours. Just like a crazy person yelling at you on your front step of your house. You can tell them, get off my property. You can tell them to get on the sidewalk, public property. Then the police will intervene. Hopefully. 
So here, then, same thing. If people are just abusing and taking it over and such, you can delete people's comments. It's your property. You can say disable comments. No more of that crazy stuff. It's your front porch. And related to that is shares. Uh, a person that comes across this has three potential actions they can do. They can add a comment, they can share it, which is that they basically copy your post into their profile and share it to their people, their connections, so then your post reaches more people. That's good. I get other people to advertise for me, other people to be a cheerleader for me, so shares. And the other action is a plus one, which is similar to Facebook in that if you enjoy something on Facebook, you can like it. Here they call it a plus one. And you will see how many people plus one did, how many people liked it. You have the ability to share on Facebook as well, to keep spreading that, that, uh, that hoax. And then over here, you also have the ability to comment, like Facebook. Twitter has those three actions as well. We want to get those actions. We'll talk about how, of course. But I would say they go, they go in rank from, from left to right here, um, from basic, immediate, intermediate to advanced, in that I want people to look at my stuff, my photos, my polls, whatever, and click plus one, that they like it. But that's very transitory. It's very throwaway in that they click plus one and they scroll on. What's next? Just like a like on Facebook. You click a like, you, you move on. The next level up is a share. Maybe I like this enough that I want my followers to know about it. I want that. That's a next level up because then my content sh spreads to more people. Another higher level of that is a comment. That's that a person comes to my content and adds their message to it and then other people add to it and other people reply and argue and have fun and all of that and there's the dialogue of social media then you could also reply to people and keep that going then you're showing people that you are social in social media you run a dialogue so not that the plus one is the worst it's just that it's the it's one of the lower actions because the lowest one is nothing a person can do nothing at all they ignore you and just move on and actually, there's one higher than the comment. I can't show you exactly here, but a person could come to my profile, my post, and then hover over my, my, uh, my profile, and then they'll have the button that says follow. That's the highest one. These are all good, but I want follows. If my content is good enough, interesting enough, funny enough, useful enough, hopefully then someone follows so that they keep seeing it. Excuse me, what's the down arrow on the share? There's more options here. So there's a new thing called collections, which is pretty new, so I myself don't have my head wrapped around it completely, but it's a way to organize posts. So not only can you just share it to, to your followers and such, you can organize it into collections. So that's why I'm saying three to five posts before people will really look at your profile to see if it's legitimate or not and then click follow. If we didn't have anything here, there's no, there's no big enticement for them to follow. So what we'll do is we'll take our second break, but before you take your break, I would recommend we've added one. We added a text post. I would recommend just to try it. What about adding a photo post or a link post or a video? See if you can figure that out, any of these. We'll, when we come back, we'll look at a few. But we'll take our break. And uh, if you want to post one or two more types of posts, like we just did, you can do so. Remember, we can delete all of this if we want. But let's do that, and then we'll take a break, 10 minutes. When we come back at 8.25, I'll show you a more effective way to post and to get followers because right now we're just talking to an empty room. I want to talk to a room with interested people. So we'll be back at 8.25.